Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Tonight I'm going to be doing a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the latest version of NeoTracker, which I have modified to now support real-time data streaming from JPL using the Horizons API. If you have an internet connection for the duration of your tracking, you can use this to download the coordinates in real-time from JPL for tracking a target. You can find the target by doing a search of the Horizons database using this new entry form here, Horizons Target. So for example, I'm going to enter the designation of my comet, 414P. I'm now going to set that as the target, and it will download information from JPL. This is just to verify that you have a valid target. If you type in an invalid target, you'll see the error come back from JPL Horizons when you go to search for it. So, for example, if I type in Artemis 1, Artemis 1 hasn't launched yet, but it will try to download coordinates for its current position right this moment using the computer clock. If I search for her Artemis 1, you can see that I don't get any ephemeris for Artemis 1. It says that's not a valid target until the 27th of September at 1750 UT. That is a predicted trajectory in the future, so it is not currently a valid target. But again, I can set it for my comet, 414P, and it will search for that, and it will download some data uh, from JPL. There we go. So I had to highlight part of the uh, command prompt here, and that hung up the program for a second. But as soon as I got rid of that, uh, the problem was fixed. So we have valid coordinates for comet 414P so we can use that for tracking. So I have next remote here. It's aligned, so in theory, the telescope is ready to go, and we can start stop tracking. But first, we need to make sure we've selected JPL, real-time JPL Horizons. The non-real-time version of JPL Horizons will simply use uh, a file that you've already downloaded from JPL to calculate the current position based on the orbital elements produced by JPL. But this is a bit different than the integrations actually performed in real time by JPL Horizons. So, for example, you can use the altitude azimuth uh, calculated by JPL to do direct tracking in real time with the real time JPL Horizons option. This is ideal for targets like Artemis 1, which have extreme elliptical orbits where you may have more than uh, one gravitational source that is important on that orbit over relatively short periods of time. So as it heads away from Earth towards the Moon, the gravity of both the Earth and the Moon can become important in calculating the true position of the object over time. The way NeoTracker works is that it will only account for uh, one source of gravity at a time, so it will not account for the perturbations on the orbit over time. So if you're using the offline JPL Horizons option, that will be less accurate because it will not compute the uh, perturbations of the orbit from multiple sources of gravity on the object at once. For that, you need real-time JPL Horizons, but for that, you also need a constant internet connection at the telescope, just a heads up. So we're going to use real-time JPL Horizons, we're going to use ASCOM, and now you also have this that you need to select mount type, out as, or equatorial. In this case, I'm using out as. So I'm going to set that, and now all I have to do is hit start, stop tracking. Now it's going to pop up a pop up. I'm going to say Celestron Telescope Driver, click OK, and that's going to let ASCOM fire up and start communicating with the program. So now the telescope does an initial slew to the coordinates predicted for Comet 414P. It's going to wait for that slew to complete. Okay, the slew is completed. Now it's going to do a countdown. So it's going to look at the time since the first slew command was issued, and it's going to wait two minutes from that time uh, to give time for uh, the slew to complete and also for it to catch up to the predicted position. So it actually slewed to a position that was two minutes ahead of when I clicked it. That gives it time for the slew to complete, and then when it hits zero, it's going to start tracking at the predicted rate of the object. So if you have an object moving fast relative to the stars, like say the Orion capsule after Artemis 1 launch, uh, you want to basically lead the target, slew to a point slightly ahead of where it currently is, wait for it to hit that point, and then start tracking at the correct rate. So it's not a super elegant solution. I'm not um, 
able to currently predict exactly how long your slew is going to take. I'm just being conservative and giving you two minutes for the telescope to complete that slew process, which should be enough for most people. You probably want to get the telescope somewhere in the ballpark of the region of the sky where it should be, but um, if you have trouble, you can always start, stop tracking, and try again. Uh, but two minutes, generally speaking, should be enough. So now we've got 25 seconds left. When it hits zero, again, it will start tracking at the predicted rate of the object. Right now it's just waiting at the uh, initial coordinates that it's slewed to, which were, again, the position of the object predicted to be two minutes ahead of when I clicked that button. Okay. So it hits zero seconds, and now it is tracking at the predicted uh, altitude and azimuth rates of uh, the object. Actually, it's, I believe, azimuth first and altitude second, shown here. And you can change those rates by using the north, south, east, and west keys. This applies whether you're using altitude azimuth or equatorial. Uh, north and south will control, obviously, altitude in the out as configuration and declination and the equatorial configuration but either way it will change the current rate by one arc second per second for each click so you're now moving north three arc seconds per second relative to the predicted rate and you can hit reset and go back to the currently predicted rate now once a minute it will download updated rates from JPL horizons and put that into the telescope. So you can see that popped up here. A couple of lines came in from JPL and it updated the uh, current rates of the object. Um, but if you want to reposition it within your camera, if you're running long exposures with a CCD camera, you can move it around in the frame using these buttons to uh, put in a arc second per second correction uh, for each click and you can also type in manual floating point values uh, but then you have to hit the button again uh, to update it within the program and again you can use reset to set it back to the currently predicted rate of the object according to JPL Horizons so that's pretty much all there is to it NeoTracker is pretty simple it's just open loop tracking but now it can download real-time data from JPL Horizons and use that to actually run the tracking rates for both ASCOM and uh, old LX200 Classic telescopes. So I initially wrote this new feature specifically for my old LX200 Classic since that's what I'm planning to use after Artemis 1 launches because I have a nice wedge for it. Well, maybe not a nice wedge, but I have a wedge <laughs> anyway for that scope so I can polar align it and, uh, and then track it that way. Um, but if I change my mind, I can now use the 11-inch uh, Lestron as well, in theory, with ASCOM. Now, this is currently untested. It is extremely experimental. I have not actually tested this in the field, and there could be bugs uh, that need to be worked out there, so use at your own risk. Uh, I'm going to put the source code on GitHub. Feel free to modify it if you see any issues, uh, and let me know. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching, and clear skies, folks.